After looking at the Mutiny aboard Skylab 4, a lot of you guys mentioned the Mutiny aboard Apollo 7, and it's a great story and also relevant, so I figured why not discuss it today on Vintage Space. Apollo 7 is probably one of the most overlooked missions of the Apollo Lunar Landing Program, partly because it didn't go to the moon. Apollo 7 was the so-called shakedown cruise of the Block 2 Apollo Command and Service Module. It had been heavily rebuilt after the Apollo 1 fire, and Apollo 7's job was to put it through all of its paces to make sure that it was in fact up to the challenge of a lunar landing mission. Apollo 7 was designed as an 11-day Earth orbital mission, but that didn't mean the crew of Wally Schirra, Walt Cunningham, and Don Isley would have it easy. In fact, their schedule was so jam-packed with experiments that the crew was a little bit worried they wouldn't get it all done in time. This actually fostered some tension before launch. In addition to testing their sextant's calibration, their spacecraft attitude control and navigation systems, their rendezvous radar by performing a rendezvous with the S-4B upper stage, and also testing the service module's propulsion system, the crew would be the first to do a live television broadcast from orbit, something Shira was not too happy about. He felt the TV broadcast was detracting from all the science goal and urged NASA not to do it, but the agency pushed forward, saying that they had to do something for the public. Apollo 7 launched on October 11th of 1968 with relatively high tensions, and things only got worse just a day into the flight. Wally Shira came down with a head cold. Now, a head cold might seem like nothing for those of us on Earth, but remember that on Earth, gravity helps drain our sinuses so that we can actually get over the cold and clear our head and actually work properly. In space, when you're in free fall and in microgravity environment, you can't clear your sinuses. Unable to clear his head of congestion, Shira became irritable, and the rest of the crew soon followed suit, though here's where the story kind of takes a couple different paths. Some versions of the story say that all three astronauts contracted the same head cold that Wally Shira did. But other retellings, namely from Walt Cunningham in more recent years, say that only Shira and Isley got sick, that Cunningham himself was able to actually stave off the worst of the cold. In any case, Shira was a slightly irritable commander throughout the duration of the mission, and it all came to a head during re-entry. The crew was all stuffed up and didn't want to put on their helmets. Shira was worried that if they were wearing pressurized helmets and unable to blow their noses, they would burst their eardrums during re-entry and landing. NASA, on the other hand, demanded that the crew put on their helmets saying that it was unsafe to land without the head and neck protected. Ultimately, it came down to Shira, and he went against NASA's wishes, causing what some might call a mutiny. He decided that the crew would not be wearing their helmets during re-entry. Instead, they would pad their heads with as much material as they could find just to brace themselves against the impact of landing. And it's true that this is what NASA was really worried about. Not long before the crew re-entered the atmosphere, Capcom and Shira had a conversation. The only thing we're concerned about is the landing, Capcom said. We couldn't care less about the re-entry, but it's your neck and I hope you don't break it. Shira simply replied, thank you, babe. The Apollo 7 crew eventually made it back to Earth safely, though none of the astronauts ever flew again. Shira was already planning to retire, but rumor is that Don Isley and Walt Cunningham ended up in such poor favor with mission control, and namely flight directors Gene Kranz and Chris Kraft, that neither would ever put them in space again. So what do you guys think about the story behind Apollo 7? Was the crew right to go against NASA's wishes, or should they have followed protocol at all cost? And really, isn't it just a great story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, leave your questions in the comment section below as well. For Vintage Space content every single day of the week, be sure to follow me on Twitter as ASD Vintage Space. And of course, with new episodes going up Tuesdays and Fridays, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.